starts off with a couple of wides. We uh, start on a slider shot just coming out from behind some chain link fencing and some posts of, I don't know, like a gate or something like that. Seeing the uh, prison van pull in and we've got a lot of practical sources and there's quite a lot going on. There's a few close-ups. Uh, there's a couple of other alternative wides and yeah, we're just going to break down, have a look and see what's going on. And the first thing that I want to draw attention to is the particular flaring that they're getting with the lensing or the filtration that they're using for this. So it is a very particular look. So you can see from the shot just here, it blooms out in a very particular fashion and it sort of has this shaping to it. And on this one, it's not as pronounced, but I'm just going to draw it out. So yeah, you'd think, sure, it's just blooming, but it's actually these areas that are filled in to a greater or lesser extent. So you've got this really obvious, almost barn door, I guess, uh, look to it. And it just comes out like that. On some of the shots, it has a coloration to it. So on the top and the bottom, you actually end up with a little bit of a blue um, sort of quality to the light. And it seems to be something which is imparted to the light sources rather than something which is actually in uh, the scene. So the light sources are being affected by the filtration and you're just getting that sense of uh, this sort of blue push from it. Now it's not as obvious in this particular shot just here, but you will definitely see it once you start looking out for it. And it's a really interesting choice because it feels, I, I guess to me, I, I don't have this, but some people who um, wear glasses and have issues with their eyes, they see really particular um, sort of patterns when light shines at them, uh, particularly night driving, that kind of thing. And it feels almost like something like that. It's um, it's like an artifact. It's not something that necessarily, if you've got 20-20 vision and you're viewing everything clean, you would see. And the way that this visual then imparts uh, a feeling to the story is interesting for me because it, it definitely takes it out of the realistic realm and more into something stylized. Yeah. It's a fun choice. So what do we have going on in this shot apart from that? There's a few practical sources that you can see in here. Obviously, we've got all of the lights that are around the top just there by the guard's tower. One, two, three, four of those. And then you have in the guard's tower sort of a ceiling light. It looks like a big flat LED. Now, that could absolutely be a light mat that they bought in. But it's important because when you look at this, if that wasn't illuminated, you wouldn't see the guard in the tower just there. So you do need to see that in order to see that guy up there. And it's playing at a different color temperature. The whole scene has a sort of yellowy quality to it for these interior lights that you can see just there. And then the exteriors are a really bluish, um, cyanish sort of push. So we're probably looking at um, sort of more daylight fixtures for all of those that I've highlighted just there. And then you've got the interiors lit with something which feels more like tungsten, but isn't clean. It isn't a nice warm glow. It's a little bit sickly, a little bit putrid, which is kind of fun. So we've got that at the top just there. Another little um, guard station just here, which has the same kind of vibe going on lighting wise. And then what I want to draw your attention to and we're going to see this as we progress through this shot. I've grabbed a couple of frames. We have these positioned all around. There's another one just there. All around the entranceway. I'm going to skip on to the next shot, and you're going to see how that plays out. One more thing to say with this. They've obviously done a wet down of the whole set just here, and that is going to give us much more going on uh, on the ground. So you get reflections, you get all of the light picking up in that, and it helps when you're backlighting something strongly like this to give a base level of illumination that isn't just super defined lines of shadow and light. It actually uh, bleaches everything out a little bit and gives it uh, that interesting shiny textural quality, which is nice. So in the next shot, we progress round. So this is a moving shot and we see there are a couple more lights along the top gantry area and want to draw attention again to all of these just here. And we've got the ones that we highlighted before in the background. Now those, I believe, are all set dressed in. I'm of of the mind that uh, you probably wouldn't have lights like that um, just around a gate in a prison. I can't see any reason for it. And they look like Astera tubes to me. Practical, source-wise, everything we caught out before, and obviously also the headlights of the bus, we didn't call that out, but um, that is something to call out now. There is light going on in 
the bus just there, worth calling out, you can see the bus driver, and we're gonna move into that now, see that in a little bit more detail. So up at the top just there, you can see a tube light. Now I believe that is the same tube lights that they had around all of those um, gates and things. And I can tell you, for my money, that looks like an Astera tube, because you can actually see just there, the little connection points that the Astera tube has. Um, we've got a couple, I recognize it. So if it's not an Astera tube, it's another LED tube of some description they've dressed in, but definitely in there for set dressing purposes. It is playing on both of our characters as they pop out. So let's take that off. And we've got uh, light coming in along the side of his face. We did have some on Reacher just there as he's walking out, obviously illuminating everything up here. From the outside, you've got everything with a more cyan push from the lighting that we've already highlighted out there and a couple of little spots of red just popping in and a little bit of orange as well probably from the guard room and that i imagine is probably from the tail lights of the bus just bouncing off something just kicking in a bit but it could be something else that we haven't seen yet this is interesting because as the shot progresses you see why it was really important to have that in there because otherwise they would be in a really dark environment. They'd be coming out into the light and you wouldn't really see much of what was going on. Here, once they step out, and indeed as they're stepping out, we have this area illuminated behind them. So you get that layering of dark and light and then they step into the lights outside. We see the bus driver behind them. Obviously everything is lit up with that tube. We've got that glow happening in the windows just here from all the cyan push. You can see that sickly orange, uh, yellow, all behind them just there in the windows of the building. And then Reacher's getting a push of light from this direction, which I think we've firmly established was from the uh, like guard tower, guard um, gantry up above. So that's all sources coming in. I'm gonna go with probably HMIs. And I think on a show of this scale, you'd be looking at bigger HMI fixtures to do this. Uh, you could totally do it with LED now. Um, I think if you're looking at 600Ds or 1200Ds for aperture, you'd probably be able to get in the ballpark with the Fresnel attachment for those. Um, my gut would be I'd want to go with a little bit more light if possible, so you're sort of stepping up to the 3K to 5K HMI range, and that would be a little bit more comfortable, especially on the wides where you have to cover a large area and maybe you want to stop down a little bit or maybe using slower lenses because you want their particular character. But it would totally be possible to do this with LEDs if you had to. And indeed, they've got LEDs in there with that tube light. So there is light coming from a number of different directions here, but we still do have shape on their faces where we need it. So Reacher obviously we've highlighted um, on the one side, but all down here, we have a nice shadow definition, and even on our banker character, I forget his name, just there, and then Reacher's just catching a little bit of either light from the bus or light from something else pushing in from this direction, but that all works really well. You've got enough going on, and you can see in the background far enough that you can really tell that this is all part of that same location. They're not trying to hide anything. It's not faked or anything like that. Jumping into the reverse shot of what Reacher's gonna see just here, we have our prison guard. And I really uh, enjoy looking at shots like this and then trying to break down how I think the thought process of everyone on set was working at the point that they got this. So we can see to the one side of him on the left, you have an Astera tube. I'm gonna call them Astera tubes, LED tube, whatever it is. And that is a practical in shot and it probably is playing a little bit on him as well. And then, We've got that up there, which is one of the bigger lights that we've mentioned before. And then we have this, one just here and one just here as well. For my money, they dressed the set with these. They had them at um, intervals throughout the whole area along that rail. Really easy to fix these tubes up, especially when you've got something like a chain link fence and those uh, rails, they can just strap them on, clip them on, whatever you want, and it will feel like part of the set. My gut would be that when they set this up and they had them on, it felt a little bit too sci-fi with strip lights just going off into the distance like that. So either for the purposes of the way that it looked or 
from the perspective of um, getting shadow and definition and drawing your eye to the right place, they decided to flick them off. Um, often, if we're setting something up, I would rather be in the position as a director of photography that we have all of the lighting that we might want to use set up. Anything that might be a practical is staged in, and then if we want to, we can turn it off. We don't have to use it, but that is a nicer position to be in, especially if you're pre-rigging uh, this, say, in the daytime and then you're shooting at night, you don't want to have to be changing lots of things around. You don't want to have to be in a position where you're constantly going back and forth to the truck to get another Astera tube or to um, grab a couple of bits of something that you need to make this scene work. Have it all in there, turn it off if you don't need it, and then just try and work with what you've got, especially on a night scene because rigging things and moving things around at night is just more difficult. It, it really eats into your schedule, especially if you're um, on some kind of crazy shoot schedule and you have to do day scenes, you have to do night scenes, you've got to think about how the scheduling impacts things and how long you can actually run. It's a huge part of getting this all to, to work in a commercial sense. Now, apart from that, our prison guard has a main push of light coming from this direction, which is fine. We've established that we have all of those lights up here, just sort of booking down onto him and that, that works. He's got a nice highlight pretty defined shadows going around. This downside is down, but we are getting that little shimmer of light from the Astera tube that we've highlighted just there. All in all, quite a pleasing frame. Definitely got a blue cyan wash to the whole thing now. And you can see that wet down earning its keep, just making all of this play a little bit higher than it might do if it wasn't uh, all wet. Moving on, we're into another Pretty wide shot just here. This is more than head to toe on all of those characters. At the top, you can really see what I'm talking about now with those lights and the way that they push out to the sides and then stretch up a little bit and they've got that blue tone to them. And that's very pronounced in this shot. It might be a different focal length thing. Maybe within this lens set, the different focal lengths have a different amount of this or maybe if you're stopping down a different amount it either comes or goes or depending on where your focal point is can actually affect that kind of thing so if you're focused close you might find that the lens characteristics the fringing any chromatic aberrations become more obvious in the background and maybe they've got a green tone and maybe the out of focus areas in the foreground have a magenta tone so you do find that with lenses depending on where you focus depending on what t-stop you're at um, the coatings how wide the lens is all of that will affect it and i just find it interesting that that's in there there is a flare that's happening around the head of our guard just here uh, which has a red quality to it and you see that move as the camera moves actually which is super cool headlight playing pretty practical playing pretty hot that's uh, definitely got um, a lot of power to it still getting push of something assume the astera tube is still in there and everything just here now we said there had been a wet down on the set just here maybe they didn't go for it maybe it was actually just what the weather gave them that day but the bus also has rain on it so it makes sense it's cool you would want that and it makes it all look really good when the windows have that on you can really see the light catching on it and if i was really wanting to get this you'd have to go to the expense of doing a wet down wetting down the bus making sure that all looked right so could be that it just happened and they went with it but either way looks super cool shadows all pointing off this way um, we've got a couple of doubling shadows happening so i think jack is getting everything from that light up there and it's pretty pronounced definitely pushing cross like that and we have on these fences as well but down here we get a little bit of doubling of the shadows because he's catching bits of other light probably from a light that's up here somewhere also yeah and calling into the wet down again everything here you're getting all of the glistening on the road everything from the headlights just there playing looks nice fun mix of tonalities so different colors for the different headlight and little indicator light just there and then everything off to cyan in the back and that's the whole scene when i look at this and i flick through all of those different frames i find it really interesting to think about how it was approached from a production standpoint obviously you've got a big location here you've got to make it work you have a requirement to light a very large area um, and that's a very, very large area. 
you have high walls, you've got to make sure that all of these different layers of stuff are paying their way and you, you're getting it on camera. There's very little point in going to a location like this and not being able to see what's going on, not being able to get a sense of the scale of it. And I suppose in a prison, the way that all of those different fences and um, barriers are working. So we're shooting through a lot of those. We're trying to get the sense that they're being closed in and they're coming into that location. And to do that, they're using all of those lights along the top that I'm calling HMIs. And then they've got all of these um, tubes dotted around just to help draw your eye to that area of the frame and make those frames within frames with the lights. The fact then that the guard towers and the little guard room just there have the different yellowy tone helps to draw your eye in and also create layers of color as well as the layers of contrast that we've got. Just zooming in up top just there, that top light, you absolutely could have that in office, totally possible. And it is also possible that that's a light mat just stuck up on the ceiling. Um, but it's very square, so I don't think they're just bouncing a light up into the space. But you can see what it's doing, and you can see that without that, you wouldn't get the sense of the guard standing in just there. And every time you're watching TV programs now, if you see a tube light, just have a look. Just have a bit of a close look, see where it is. How would these be powered? Why would you have lights along a thing like that? It just it doesn't particularly make sense. And from a staging point of view, even on this wide just here, just going back to it for a moment, you can actually see that that is the far left, uh, far right hand side that we saw before. And then you see them going off along here. So they really did think about this and they set the whole area of fencing with these ready to go and then ultimately didn't use them. I can see that in this shot, it probably had been distracting to have them at hip height. I don't think I would have necessarily wanted to do that. I'd be more keen to keep the light up the top and keep the headlight down here and then have the action play in between those two. You can sort of feel a ratio pulling you towards where they are. If there was another line of straight light going across, cutting through, I think it would just be distracting. And then I think also on this shot for the same reasons, we're drawn over to the left-hand side. He's getting most of his light from the right-hand side. I think if you had all of those lights in the background playing as bright as that one is, it would feel a little bit off and it wouldn't perhaps give your character enough space to breathe in the frame. So this is all considerations. And when we're looking at lighting with this kind of fixture, it does become part of the set and you're thinking about it in terms of practical and in terms of how it's dressed in and why it would be in there and what it's doing when it is. So really interesting to see all of that. And as soon as I spotted one, I just kind of went through and just tried to tick them all off. So yeah, uh, it's a fun little drink along with game. Every time you see an Astera tube or a Quasar tube or any other kind of LED fixture like that in shot, you got to take a drink or something. And uh, yeah, with the way TV programs go at the moment, you'll probably end up completely wasted.